morning guys hello from beautiful Prague from Czech Republic at the moment I'm in the train station called Masarkova Nadraje as you can see behind me super beautiful and the ceiling is just amazing I've been spending some time here I'm actually on a trip for Saturday day trip to a city called Terezin actually it's not a big city it's a small town or maybe I can call it even a village it's on the northern part of Czech Republic and I will be making Saturday trip from here from the Masarkova Nadraje from Prague to Terezin and then also come back to Prague and the um, main objective for me to visit Terezin uh, if you are Czech you might be wondering why Terezin because there is almost nothing to visit or to see uh, main objective for me or the site to see I don't want to call it attraction is the concentration camp in Terezin and actually it's the one of the biggest uh, concentration camps in the Czech Republic so I was just curious and also would like to make content from there that's why I will be visiting Terezin so as you can see this is the train station uh, called Masarkova uh, station but that station is actually quite small because this is actually taking you only to the only domestic uh, trains are departing from this place there's also another train station called Hlavni Nadraje which is the main train station in Prague and it's much much bigger and more wild and there are more trains which takes you outside Czech Republic so uh, time to get a coffee and then later we hop on on the domestic train and visit Terezi see you later guys sitting places more like a cabins here's a trash bins yeah. super nice and for one hour and a half train ride I paid only six American dollars which was around 130 and check crowns not bad for this beauty you can take your bikes with you if you want to go for hiking and velocipede rides or just family trips with your pet or alone or as a couple it's super nice just arrived to this beautiful town called Nove Kopisti there's not much around it's more like a farming places small houses there's cute doggies right there and uh, the train station was this one this town name has the train station as well where that's where you need to get out and as a next step if you don't have a car then you need to walk around 30 to 40 minutes to get to Terezin town which what I'm doing right now so I have a little bit long walk I will see when I'm on the highway maybe I will stop a car or something to check if it's possible to get there with them if not just 30 minutes walk not bad see you in Terezin town guys while I am enjoying my walk to Terezin town which I have still 20 minutes to go I noticed I mean they are here I didn't notice them I mean they were here uh, it's a quite long and wide cornfields which looks amazing as you can see they are started growing slowly that looks beautiful and on the other side of the road there's this mini road right here 
on the right side there's a weed farm as well not the type of weed you are thinking about it's actually the normal weed for for baking i think i'm not completely sure but yes i think it is the um, yes it's true this is for this is the wheat for baking making the bread and other stuff of course look at this field it's amazing and so wild and so wide as well okay and as a uh, 20 minutes to go to get to the town it's a little bit hot uh, sun is shining but i don't complain about it i'm enjoying my time uh, there's nobody at all no cars this is only road i think for the for walking and maybe motorcycles or something like that but we are getting there slowly the town is somewhere right there 20 minutes to go guys see you just arrived to Terezin town it's quite very quiet here in the first place and also it's very beautiful I mean look at these buildings they look a little bit old but it has a very nice vibe and this is the main square in Terezin which is just in the middle of the town which looks beautiful as well I believe that's a church and then nice park not much i see fountain right there and lots of trees around and there's a bank right there which we will be exploring the town in a while but i have actually a reservation and tour organized for the concentration camp uh, which i have around 20 minutes to get there so first thing we will do is to go to the concentration camp and later on we will get back to the town and also possibly get some good Czech lunch possibly to get also some beer I think it's quite warm so cold beer would be really good yeah we will do the exploration later on not sure how I will feel after the exploration of the concentration camp but you will see my mood and we will see how things go see you in a while For me it's strange to see the tractors in the town because I've never been like that distant from the cities in Czech Republic so they are super cute and very nice as well There is this uh, bridge which I've been crossing over or we are still on it and there is the river as well crossing by the, this town and we are only 10 minutes away from the concentration camp Still, city seems very quiet, I think because it's weekend, but it's nice. So far, I have a good feelings about this town. It's cute, it's nice, but also very sad history is waiting for us in the concentration camp. Finally, I arrived to the concentration camp. And this place welcomes us with graveyard and also memorial of the victims of this place these are all graves and I see only numbers on them and some of them has names and born and death dates as well this concentration camp was built during the World War II and uh, it was built in 1941 and first prisoners arrived here during 1942 and uh, actually lots of Jewish people from uh, so Dutch, Germans, Danish and Austrian Jewish were kept here as prisoners and only 23,000 people survived from this place or escaped or uh, kept alive basically but 144,000 people were prisoners in this terrible terrible place this then is a memorial Jewish sign and the cemetery from the top view I 
I see more people around, so I'm not sure how busy is inside, but hopefully not too busy to make vlogs and we can hear each other. This is the entrance which we are about to get in. And this is the big walls. Not sure, maybe it used to be water here. I'm not completely sure. But I believe we're gonna get a guide because you cannot explore it yourself alone. Hopefully we will get a guide so we can get more information about the, this sad history. We just finished the tour with our tour guide in English. We had around um, eight people in the group. I didn't record anything, but I will be taking you around and explaining what I remember and what I saw. So I don't know how I feel about the whole thing. It's crazy and very sad history of humanity. This is the room, one of the rooms where workers were sleeping. You can see the beds around me check out the room and then later i will tell you how many people were sleeping here it's not that big room i'm sure it's clear from the video there are beds as well on the corner and then we get to here this is also all beds around it's around three floors imagine 550 people were sleeping here when they came back from the working they were staying here without any hygiene i see there is a sink here and then on the other side but for 550 people there were only two toilets i believe these are the toilets and imagine the smell and the diseases and the conditions right here. And, and as a sad part is that there, I showed you the sink here for washing hands or your face or whatever, but there was no showers at all for 550 people in this room only. And then you get out, there are more and more rooms on the other side, but there's also single rooms on the other side of the once you enter you can see all the doors are open and these are the conditions for the people who was staying here look at this how small is this place And also the tour guide was explaining us how hot and how cold was this place was getting. You can see the rooftop, so basically sun was hitting directly and during the winter this place was freezing and many people died just from the cold, cold weather. Again this place was only for the people to sleep but they were going traveling to the different place for working and they were preparing um, different parts of the military uh, machines cars and stuff like that this is actually where the tour is starting from there are numbers and you can also read some of the informations uh, on the walls so these are the rooms being used actually when the people are arriving here for the registration and getting their uniforms and stuff like that and this is for example might be kind of an office not sure how clear is it from the video but yes this is one of the rooms and you have to take into consideration that this place is actually being reconstructed later on because there was a big flood in Terezin so all this place were under uh, water uh, it was flooded but later on they reconstructed it and you can see the furniture and stuff like that is 
kind of a new. But we will go to the rooms as well and you will see that the beds and everything are actually original things uh, which been recovered from the flood. The very crazy part uh, our tour guide was explaining us was about the propaganda was done here. So they were actually promoting this place and they were, um, they had kind of contract with the devil. So people from here were actually trying to promote this place, how amazing is it and how nice is it, how much fun they have here. And that's why uh, they were sending postcards and it was kind of, they had no choice. It was kind of a contract with the devil basically. Yeah, so there was also uh, documentaries were done, there was a media, videos were made about this place and it was attracting even more people. And another thing you have to know is that this place in the first place were uh, serving as a prison. Uh, you can see the big walls and the fence around it. So it doesn't mean there was only Jew Jewish people here but there are also lots of Czech political prisoners and other people as well who are staying here and getting tortured and getting killed. There are different rooms which we will go in a while to each of them. Uh, this is the original place, number 12, where was the prison, which we're gonna get in a while. Hi! big walls and all of these walls are concrete basically and you might be asking huh this shower is looking really nice but the reality is that this place were for the people to be killed tortured and you can imagine the blood and everything else right here so it wasn't really for the hygiene actually these are the prisons number 14 Check out how small is this place. And there are also different rooms and as I mentioned these walls are concrete. Different rooms, different numbers. Small but crazy. You can also feel the energy here. I mean, you can imagine the things were happening here and how people were screaming and torturing, getting tortured and yeah, crazy. And then uh, this is a very special um, uh, cell, basically, Gavriola Princeps were kept here. And you can see also his picture on the picture, uh, on, the, on the window. Okay, now I'm gonna take you to some of the rooms where before soldiers were sleeping there and later on prisoners and I'm gonna give you a little bit details as well about the numbers which is the crazy part we will see not sure if this one is original but it's the thing I believe calling people back to rooms or something like that or maybe food time or whatever and this is a uh, room number nine it says uh, in the years of 1940 and 45 more than 1500 Jews were imprisoned in the small uh, small fortress this is one of the most crazy rooms. There is a one sink here and I believe this is the only toilet one. And these are the beds. So people used to sleep more like this. So there is a different numbers on it. Uh, the most crazy part is that, so this was originally built for the soldiers and 40 soldiers were fitting here perfectly, I think. I think for this room, 40 uh, soldiers sounds reasonable. But the crazy part is that during the Nazi time, this place were filled with 100 people. 100 people. You can just imagine the numbers and how people were fitting here and the hygiene level and everything. 
These are some of the original stuff, still kept. I believe the beds are also still original. It's just a crazy number, 100 people sleeping in this room without any hygiene. They were dying from the infections and the diseases and there were so many bugs and insects in this place. Yeah, insane, insane. It's crazy what human can do to other humans for the power, for money, for the war. Just insane. This is the prison and again very small place before this was used only for one prisoner to stay here but during the second world war this there was 60 people who were fitting here 60 people you cannot even lay down in this place so that means people were actually sleeping standing Standing and sleeping. Look at this one. Sixty prisoners in this place. Again, no hygiene, no way to lay down. You have to sleep basically standing. Yeah. Similar to the other room I showed you guys, this is the another one. where originally 40 soldiers were fitting and uh, but then from the nazi time that was more than 100 people this is the our toilet place which has been blocked i think for the smell and everything and i see water tank right there okay now we're gonna go to to the showers and there are also some stories to be told as you can see there are big groups which they can take you around explain the things uh, maybe i will need to wait for a while for this group to be away and then later i will so i will show you this room where it used to be showers and there's also some stories to be told we arrived to room number 13 this is used to be showers and crazy story about this place is this so you might be start imagining it's something to do with gas or whatever that's how 50 people were killed but reality is different maybe it's even more crazy so this place where they were hanging the uniforms right here so the uniforms were uh, hanged here of the prisoners and then later it was basically totally wet you might say what's the crazy part it wasn't washed with chemicals or whatever actually prisoners had to wear them right away while the clothes were wet and even during the winter that some of the people died this way crazy how crazy and then we get to the showers there's a bench here and there's also a heating system but these heating systems were never activated they were never used actually so imagine during the winter yeah so these are the showers above us and hundreds and thousands of people were taking showers right here and it's only some group of people had access to the showers maybe once a week or so but the first place i showed you where i was saying 550 people were living in one room that that workers had never had a, any shower I believe this is the changing room. And then we are getting to 
other room. This is where the clothes or the uniforms were washed. This is where we started and came from around. And during the washing, washing process, no, no chemicals were used. So it was just being wet and then people had to wear them. During the winter even. This is the room for the for the doctors, more like a hospital, which been functioning for a while and then end of the World War II, so 1945, all the people been actually, all the equipment and uh, medicine were taken away from here. So some of the doctors who was working here, they had to do the operations without anesthesia and without actually any medicine and uh, as well no hygiene, I believe. So this used to be the kind of hospital where the prisoners' health were taken care of. I think some critical operations were done. And then we have this spot which used to be barber shop or shaving place. And it, this was also operational only sometimes, not always. This place looks decent, but if people didn't have access to here as, as often as they should, then there is no point to have this place so shining or so nice. So this was the shaving, shaving room. There are lots of people, so we will hold for a while, then I want to show you other places and also there's a tunnel where the soldiers were using before. Uh, this is a room I haven't been yet, let's go check it out. Not sure what is this place, but it just looks empty. So yeah, it's a very, very sad and crazy history of humanity, which we shouldn't be proud about and maybe we should learn from this history. But in general, uh, even though maybe the situation were not the best between Czechs and German people that time during the Second World War. I mean, Germans didn't have a good relationship during the World War II with anyone, I guess. But in general, right now, Germans and Czechs are very friendly. And uh, as you know, we are in each other's borders and the situation is quite well. We are super friendly when it comes to the politics, when it comes to the support during the COVID time and everything else. So, very glad to know that um, this sad story didn't affect the current relationship with, between these two countries. This is where I came from and there's this bridge and we have also view um, based on the stories this place might have been flooded for security reasons as well to be protected from the enemies as well so at some point i believe there was a water and then this is the tunnel which is number 17 where the people are getting in right now it's around 500 meters tunnel uh, you need to just walk straight and it goes all the way around the base and then you get out somewhere from here and then you get back to the to the main part and as an interesting story which number 16 you can see here uh, this is one of the place where Czech three Czech people were escaped from this place and actually survived at the end uh, story is that during the one of the holidays the German holidays um, people soldiers were drunk and they haven't noticed and three people managed to escape from this place so at the end they survived and uh, 
yeah, that's the story about that spot. We will not be going through the tunnel. It's quite long and I already been there. But to be honest, it's quite dark. And even if I make a video there, it will not be visible. But we can go other direction and pop up right there. And here we are, as I have promised. There's this statue. Not sure what's the name. It's called Nameless Ladislav Chukov. Interesting. And uh, I want to show you something, something very special as well. Uh, where people been shoot with the guns and also the place where be people been uh, hanged. There's this door you just pass by and then you arrive to this place. This is the place where people were hanged and it's still standing. This is the original version. It's crazy to imagine someone being tortured this way and dying very very slowly there are lots of people there it's a big group and the place you see where is the shadow actually from there soldiers will be standing and then shooting all the way to here that's where where people were standing and you can see the memorial um, candles and the tree right there at that point but anyway that was kind of the place for them to target and kill people since 1943 police prison became the scene of execution carried out without a court judgment so the largest group of prisoners a total of 52 people was shot here in 1945 52 people and based on what uh, the guide told us, only three people were hanged right here at that point. Not sure what's better to, what way is better to die. I mean, there's no any good way to die, of course, but hanging sounds really terrible. I mean, you die very slowly, you suffer a lot as well. Maybe shutting people were actually I don't know, it's just a question in my mind, like, if I am in that situation, what I would choose, if I have an option to choose even. Crazy, um, crazy, crazy. So, this is uh, the place, uh, this is the bridge where we were talking from, uh, and uh, it's been expected that at some point this place were filled with water, uh, as a last option to protect to protect the place and uh, protect it from the enemies back to the tunnel now I am out from the concentration camp quite an interesting experience I mean, Teresa is in general is a very small town, but if you get a chance to be here or if you're around it, make sure you visit. It's not too expensive to get in. Uh, I paid only $10, including with the tour guide. They explain everything and the history, all the propagandas and uh, how this place used to be and then what it turned to and how is it right now. Uh, yes, and here's the back to to the graveyards and the memorial. Okay, I think this is the end of the trip right here for this video, and now I will go for having a lunch. And probably I will make another video or maybe I will combine it with this video. We will see. Thank you guys for watching for now.